Hello, this is the video for the data mining course. And in this video, I would like to discuss about data visualization. So this data visualization in the data mining or in the data science is also one of the issue, big issue, because if you can visualize your data, then you can get some insights at the first time. And after you get the insight for the first time, you may know what kind of knowledge or what kind of analysis or what kind of things you can do further about the data. So this basic of visualization hopefully can give you some understanding, okay, some the data visualization that already available in the internet or in uh, some data mining tools. Okay. Of course, um, some the visualization are not available in orange data mining, but you can generate those like uh, the some examples later, you can generate with uh, JavaScript, for example. The so data visualization, what is data visualization? Um, you know, as the name visualization so you want to show okay? and why why we are doing with the data visualization we want to gain insight into an information space so we have the data but i don't know how is the data characteristics so i want to get some insights okay so even the previous video you already learned about what is the histogram or we can see some the box plot or we have the scatter plot if you have those kind of graphical and i want to know how can i deal with the linear regression oh yeah based on the scatter plot you can easily know that there is a correlation between the data then you can just move forward with the regression analysis. Yeah, something like that we can do with the visualization. We can provide qualitative overview of large data set. So if you have very huge data, so now is the era of big data, and you may not easily understand the data. So you need to visualize it so you can have a good insight about your data. or at least an overview of your data and you can search for some patterns or search for the trends or you can search the structure or some irregularities or the relationship among data and you can uh, find interesting regions or suitable parameters so those kind of analysis are important okay? before we do the analysis yeah we can visualize it there are some not categorization we can do the basic visualization so in the basic visualization actually there are many many things and there might be other kind of techniques for example pixel oriented geometrical projection icon base hierarchical visualization or visualizing complex data and relations yeah. So I want to start with the very basic one. What would you like to show? Okay. So this question is a kind of a basic question for you to do the data mining stuff. If I want to compare the data, then yeah, those kind of chart is necessary. If I want to see the distribution of the data, then you can refer to this kind of charts. If you want to see the composition of the data, okay, the composition of the data refers to those charts. Or if you want to see the relationship of the data, then you can refer to this charts. Yeah, actually there are still many kind of charts, but yeah, I just want to make a summary like this one. So in the comparison, so it means I want to compare one column or one attribute with another attribute. 
then you can use column chart okay the variable with column chart you can use table of table with embedded chart so in every cell you will show the histogram for example you have bar chart okay so this is kind of bar chart and then you have column chart okay so the column chart means yeah is similar with the uh, histogram or bar chart but it has uh, multiple uh, chart inside okay and circular area chart you know, if you want to see like which has the biggest influence in comparison to the other variable so this is more and this one is less okay for example like this one line chart okay so you want to plot the data and then you will draw some line and you can also make multiple lines if you have multiple data so it means you want to compare them in terms of the distribution yeah you can see the distribution based on the histogram okay so there are some kind of histogram like column histogram airline histogram scatter chart so scatter chart is yes so uh, i think it's um, the same name with the uh, scatter plot maybe. and 3d area chart okay so you want to make as a three dimensional so you can see from different perspective of the different attributes about the relationship yeah so we want to see whether the relationship among two attributes or among three attributes so if it is two attributes then you can just make a scatter chart or scatter plot if it is three attributes then you can make a kind of bubble chart okay so those bubble chart so the bubble represent the number of frequency of a particular area okay. if you are dealing with the composition okay, so the composition it refers to the column chart okay, and it can be stacked okay. stack means uh, this is the first data and then this is another data and this is another data and we put in one uh, x axis or we can have also the stack stack area chart yes okay? stack area chart so we have a multi layer something like that pie chart so we have the pie and yeah it refers the pie it refers to this distribution of one item or we have waterfall chart so the waterfall chart is something like uh, the waterfall okay you know the waterfall so i want to know where is the location after i have the highest distribution and the lowest distribution so the uh, chart is uh, having their own purpose so bar chart line chart scatter chart so they have different purpose and they have different meaning of course you need to understand if we have this data what kind of chart that we need to use okay. so bar chart it is best used for reading numbers accurately from the chart and it can show the comparison individual bar to each other and it will explore overall trends across the categories so like this one in uh, 1881 there is uh, this different uh, occupation between male and female okay. oh yeah this is uh, one big issue right? <laughs> in the old days the male have more job than the female and we can directly plot those uh, things in the bar chart okay. and the data consists of one categorical variable and the other is about the numerical variables. So it means the unknown occupation is the categorical and then I have the number, how many, okay, how many male, how many female. In this case, yeah, we can say this is the numerical variable. Okay. Histogram. So the histogram actually it is uh, um, yeah it shows almost similar with the bar chart but but in the histogram we want to show the density and the distribution of continuous 
numerical data. Okay. So it's different if the bar chart, bar chart it plots the categorical data, but the histogram it is for the numerical data. So I have the data height. I have the range from 60 until 90. And I want to know the frequency of someone who has the hit from 60 until 65, 65 until 70, 75 until 75, 75 until 80, and so on. So this is the frequency. Yeah, the result is the same frequency, but the X are different. In the bar chart, the X is categorical data. In the histogram, the X is continuous data, okay? <clears throat> and it has only one continuous <coughs> numerical variable. <coughs> Pie chart, it is used, uh, this best used for when separate categories add up to meaningful whole. Yeah. So the red color means the Hispanic, for example. Okay? And the blue color means white. And the green color is African American, American Indian, Asian Pacific, and other. Using this pie chart, you can easily know about the categories and the portion of those categories. So we have the one text or categorical variable, and the other is a numerical variable. <clears throat> Line chart. Yeah, this is a good uh, chart to show the continuous and temporal data. <clears throat> what is the meaning? You know, continuous, right? The continuous means the number, numerical data, and temporal. Temporal means time. So I want to see the numerical data based on the time. Time here is referring to the month. For example, January, February, March, April, May, and June. So the data consists of one categorical variable Okay, on the X, <clears throat> so it means I want to know the uh, sales of store A on January. Okay. I want to know the sales of store B on January. So yeah, you can see the plot here. <clears throat> and there is one or more numerical variables on the Y axis. So this is the uh, number of sales. Scatter plot. So in the previous video, we already learned about the scatter plot. It is best used for showing how one variable affects the other, or for showing precise data dense visualization, correlation, and clusters between two variables. So if you can see this one, <clears throat> you can see there is a high correlation between the total bill and the tip. Okay, so if we can create a regression function then we can easily predict if you spend forty dollar then you might give somehow the tip is around here maybe okay the data are two numerical variables and when a third numerical variables can be added to create a bubble chart okay. so this one for example yeah I want to know the total bill with regard to the tip and for example how many customer okay. so it will affect me if you are going to restaurant only two or three percent or four percent or five percent when you spend a lot and if you just have only two person then maybe you just give a small tip but if you spend a lot forty dollar and you are with 10 people of course you need to give more tips okay so that kind of things it can be referred to the dot so or in the previous chart we saw it is a bubble chart okay yeah we can use this bubble chart for that one. okay oh sorry heat map so the heat map it shows the general trends let's say if you have the average monthly temperature Okay. When you have this one, it will show you easily about the monthly temperature. 
if it is red then it is like hot if it is green so it is cool and you can see immediately about the overview of the data so the data is the data grid of two numerical or categorical variables so in this case it is the numerical but we want to make it as a category like cold uh, cool hot or warm so the third variable is of a number of data point associated with the particular row or column is encoded as the color of the cells so you can determine what kind of colors that you want to show here so yes the color like green so this is the dark green and this is the light green and it becomes yellow just light orange and then dark orange it becomes like red you can also show maps so when you are showing maps yeah of course you need to understand the maps location uh, for example it is a usa map then yeah you need to understand the special patterns so the special patterns it means i want to know the density of the people for example or i want to know the um, the average gdp of that particular area so in this area yeah it is um, maybe yeah uh, this is the number four of vehicles okay so the number of vehicles in that area it is like zero until 773 oh it's very less but here what about here yeah is from 1000 and 1000 until 1500 so there are many vehicles okay in the black color area and this kind of data it will consist of x and y longitude and latitude and sometimes it can be just an address or like the building name or place name one numeric variable or one categorical variable is good for this kind of map okay we can put symbols in a map for example if i have this map it is the sim in the africa and i want to know the gdp okay so as i mentioned before i want to know the gdp so the the big circle means the higher gdp and the small circle means the lower gdp so you can easily see the different or the gap between those countries in uh, Africa. So like this one is small. Oh, this is big. Okay. In the geometric projection visualization techniques, okay, it means I want to project the data into some uh, uh, kind of visualization. So we can use scatter plot or you can use the scatter plot matrices like we did uh, before like the heat map or some parallel coordinates okay, this is the scatter plot matrices so it's data uh, it's categorical data will have the show okay so like this one i want to see the relationship between sepa length and beta length Okay. I want to see the relationship between petal length and sepal width. Okay. So this is the plot or the scatter plot. We call this is the scatter plot matrices. Or the parallel coordinates. So in the parallel coordinates, yeah, I want to know the data in the parallel way. So it is the x. Okay. So if I just change the x into some uh, corresponding attributes. Okay. So if we are scaling the data into minimum and the maximum, then we can have this kind of line chart in the respect of X and Y. So we have the parallel coordinate of the positive and the negative to show everything in the graph. Uh, maybe you know in some uh, content-based uh, communication tool, we have the icon. Okay? So icon can be also referring to the visualization techniques. Okay? So somehow like churn of faces or stick figures, it can be regarded as the visualization techniques. 
So the general techniques is the shape coding. Okay. The shape coding, it means like uh, you have the triangle or circle or box. Okay. So based on this shape, yeah, it refers to different information. For colors, okay. So if you know in the colors, uh, in the previous heat maps, we have the uh, green refers to cold and red refers to hot. In general phases, it is also one of the famous visualization tool. It wants to show the uh, characteristic of the data. For example, instead of uh, showing the uh, if you are in if you are using the questionnaire, okay, you will see like uh, one is very bad, okay, and five is very good okay. so in order to show the result maybe yeah, you can show it with the uh, like um, uh, histogram okay? or if you have this is the categorical then you can just use the bar chart okay? but with this kind of shadow face yeah you can have different representation so, for example, X is the eyebrow length, and Y is the eye size, okay? and Z is the nose length. Okay? So, yeah, it, you, you can have different representation for each of these face items. Okay? So, based on this face item, uh, we can have like multi dimensional data in one figure. Stick figure. So the stick figure is good to represent the census data. Okay, so this is the age, okay? for example, yeah. and then this is the income. So we want to know about the income in the respective of the age. So if the age is like yeah somehow young, mm -hmm. the salary or the income is like less. Okay. So we can draw something like this one. Okay, okay. When the age is young, the seller the income is low, but when the age is uh, getting older, then the income is uh, higher. And also we uh, can have like um, we if you see this one, actually it contains them. Uh, sticks okay so the sticks here let's say this one is a stick okay we have uh, one body and yeah we have the different uh maybe this one and this one is the same but yeah you can see this is different and this is different so uh the different stick will have different meaning okay so here is also different and this also different okay. it means yeah it represents something so if the edge here so the other stick is representing like the gender the other stick representing the education the other stick is representing the uh, maybe the number of family and etc okay so in one stick figure it consists of many attributes Hierarchical visualization techniques. So some of your data might be in the hierarchical okay? hierarchy. So it means you have another kind of children in order to fit with the visualization technique, for example. And there are some uh, techniques for the hierarchical visualization. You can use the dimensional stacking, worlds within worlds, tree map, countries, or info cube. In the dimensional staking, yeah, actually it's just a way to do the stack. Okay? If you are understand about the stack, yeah, it's just showing the. Now, uh, if I want to know this one, there is the attribute one and attribute two, and then I want to know the detail about the 
attribute one and attribute two, two in the respective of the other attributes. Yeah. So we can just zoom in this one and then we can analyze other attribute in that particular stack. Yeah. And yeah, dimensional stacking is also like this one. You, if you have the like some grid here and then the grid or this kind of uh, categorical data you can also put the histogram or you can put this uh, bar chart in order to understand how many or like you can understand the distribution of those data okay so this categorical data and this categorical data have this kind of distribution so this is like a multi-dimensional visualization okay? worlds within worlds yeah in some good uh, tools like matlab or like mathematica they have the way to visualize in the 3d format so this is like the three-dimensional format and you can oh it's not only three but you can see um, there's x4 there's x5 and there's x3 and then there's x2 and there's x1 Okay, and there is one more about function. So you can see it is like n vision. Yeah, so it's very dynamic with the different angle of the interaction. And yeah, you can you can see other perspective. Yeah, for example, if I want to see like the x one is the currency. Okay. One nil, yeah, it's the currency. X two is the GDP, and then F is the mutual act like the uh, sales, okay. And the X three it refers to the uh, the rate of inflation, okay. And then the X four is uh, like the uh, product price, okay. And yeah, this is about the uh, number of people. Okay. So, yeah, if we want to see all those correlation between the data, then we can just plot in one like this one. Of course, you need to really understand the structure in order to interpret the result. We can make tree map. Yeah, so the tree map it refers to the uh, hierarchical partitioning as well. If we are uh separating or partition the x and y into this kind of boxes okay so we can say this is a kind of one class or this is another class this is another class and this is another class and we can yeah plot this one maybe in order in accordance to the world category or it is according to the nation category business category so those are about the business and those are about the nation okay? so it is about the nation and yeah we want to you want to see yeah, you want to show based on the importance the degree of importance so this is the headline okay so this is the headline of this category and yeah this tree map is also useful if you have a lot of categorical data 3d cone trees yeah is something like cone and you can see the uh, the cone is like the level one this is level two level three and then level four and as a throw that's a throw okay so this uh, kind of circle is like the 2d and then if you want to make it uh, 3d then you can refer to what is the hit and then what is the diameter and yeah it refers to some more informational things okay in the info cube is <clears throat> also about the 3d visualization you want to see the hierarchical information in the respect of the data let's say yeah in this box okay in this box you can see the bar chart in this box you can see the bar chart this is in this box you want to see the bar chart so it means in the cube okay in each of the cube you can have the bar chart and in the bar chart 
you may represent it into like somehow the text okay and yeah, other things you can also use with this info cube if you want to show the complex data yeah the tree map yeah we already learned from the previous graph with the, this tree map we can analyze the text and the social network data and if you are using the visualizing user generated text then you, know, you can easily visualize with this kind of tree Okay. This is very good to visualize the relationship okay. and also visualizing the social networks. So I want to know how many followers of uh, president or yeah, of your friend, for example. Okay. And then if you want to also check uh, the relationship of the data mining course with other courses then you can also build with this kind of complex data relationship this is another uh, visualization of the complex data let's say if you want to connect between some uh, disease yeah? if you have a high blood pressure what is there any correlation with the allergies is there any correlation with the overweight is there any correlation with the high cholesterol? Wow. Yeah, if you can make a connection between those diseases, then you can be aware. Oh, now I have a diabetes. Okay. Now I have a diabetes. Is there any possibility that I will get asthma? Yeah. Using this graph, you can see the relationship. Okay. okay so I will stop this video here and we will check the orange shortly so you can have some idea about the contents of this course especially the this week about the data visualization about the exploratory data analysis and some uh, videos about the data set okay thank you for listening see you on the next video